What's up, guys? Um, you guys know the normal routine. Uh, let me know if the audio and picture looks good to you guys in the comments below. And I'm uh, going to wait a few moments, build some audience. As always, thank you guys for tuning in for another one. <clears throat> Sweet. All right. Yep, we're doing um, March live updates here. Um, Going to be talking about the last couple of events, which I believe were the Desert Classic and the Dirt Nitro Challenge. Going to be talking through a um, little bit of the events, kind of anything that kind of was standing out uh, as far as how the event was ran, how the vehicles we're working set up changes that were made throughout the events and um re just recently i went out to um the nitro compound this past week did some testing with some nitro buggy running um was able to find some really good stuff uh, with some uh some more things to um kind of add to your guys's checklist to try back at your home track for eight scale and then um, did some testing at Hobby Action. Did some club racing as well with the B7. Um, got, I got both um, B7 and my 8 scale car here we'll be talking about throughout the video. So uh, the, you know, one thing I want you guys to think about throughout this video stream is any questions you guys may have regarding any of the Team Associated Products, uh, J Concepts Tires, Hobby Wing uh, Equipment, um, Servos, whatever it may be. Uh, that way I can um, go back, review your question, and hopefully help you with any um, anything that can uh, help you on the track. So we got uh, some viewers here. I want to say happy Easter as well. Uh, I ended up um, driving down to my dad's house back in the old school hobby room here. Um, so I got like a little bit of my old trophies and st trophy cars here from some of the nationals and world stuff. So good to see everyone. Taking some time to uh, talk about some RC, and there's uh, nothing better to talk about than uh, racing some RC cars. Ricky Weibel's in the house. What's up, bud? Mike, Justin, Jonathan, Adam Peters. Yes, I did get um, a bagel this morning at Hot Bagel, and it was packed. All right, so it looks like we got some people tuning in. Um, we got some audience joined. Uh, for those who are in the chat, uh, thank you so much. If you guys could, please give it a like and um, also share it to your to your buddies. That way, um, the racing information gets spread out as much as possible. As always, for those who are on the Facebook stream, um, I'm also streaming on YouTube as well. So there's going to be comments. Or questions may be asked that you may not see on your end that are coming from YouTube. And then the YouTube um, streamer people, I am also streaming on Facebook. So if there's questions that you don't see, that is why. Um, typically, sometimes when I'm answering a question, I will bring it up to the, um, the screen. And that way, everyone can see what the question is. And then the answer, of course, I'll be answering. So... Um, Looks like we're getting some people tuning in here. Again, if you guys have any questions regarding any of the um, vehicles, tires, radio, 
um, electronics, please put in the comments and um, I'll get to it. So just like that, we are going to be talking about the Desert Classic. Um, obviously, um, Desert Classics hosted a hobby action raceway. For those who don't know, um, my local hub, local hobby shop and racetrack here in Chandler, Arizona. Um, you know, for those who um, have never been, definitely a bucket list for for someone to tune in uh, to one of the best ten scale racing facilities around in the country. Um, this year, I believe was. I want to say it was could have been our highest entry event. Um, someone would have to comment, maybe Larry Tom's in here or something to talk about how many entries you totally had. But I believe it was like 370, 350, I want to say. Um, one of the higher desert classics that we've had. And honestly, a lot of new faces, which is really nice to see. And, um, you know, obviously with the new um, team associated B7, people have been really stoked and excited to kind of get out there and try their vehicles at different tracks and see what it's capable of. Um, I was a very successful weekend for myself. I was able to uh, TQ and um, TQ all the classes actually. And I ended up getting um, second and two wheel drive behind Davey Bata, which drove um, amazing during the mains. And then four wheel drive and truck was able to get the win. Um, pretty crazy battles between uh, Tater and I, uh, Brock and I in four wheel. And uh, yeah, just really kind of, uh, you know, challenging because the track gets so high grip. The track's kind of changing throughout the week. It's getting a little bit of some character with some ruts and bumps um, and also with the grip being so high. So that was um, really good. And the guys that built the layout, uh, it was a good layout. They seem to have... Uh, made some updates after the event was over to kind of fix some of the jumps, um, which was good the last time I went out club racing. But um, for those who were on my last um, live stream video, we talked about the B7 with the rear sway bar um, in the rear, and then which is what I ultimately ended up racing with at um, the Desert Classic. And uh, honestly, I would say my car was probably a 7.5, um, 7 maybe out of 10 as far as like comfortable and um, having the speed. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think that it wasn't – it was definitely capable of winning. So I think that's always a positive. I ended up going back after the event was over and um, did some club racing this past week um a few weeks after the desert classic actually and really kind of hammering some things down with the rear the rear end and figuring out where the rear end stands when it when it rolls through the suspension and understanding um uh kind of where the grip's at how much i can stiffen it before it breaks loose and again i kind of really I'm going to say this. I probably have driven the best two-wheel drive I've ever driven at Hobby Action this past week um, with some of the changes I made, and um, which it was nice because some of the things that I was working on with the B7 while I was there, I also had a couple of our locals, Scott Spear, um, Adam Peters was there, and um, Willie Smith was also racing and really tried some of the stuff that I was working on. Um, not, they basically ended up doing like 60 to 7% of what I had on the rear end, but I ended up ultimately pulling off the rear sway bar. So there's no sway bar at all. And, um, the biggest thing that we did here was, um, the sway bar adds stiffness number one. So I ended up taking off the, the sway bar, which made it soft, but I ended up really adding, um, a lot more um, leverage to the arm by moving the shock location all the way to the outside position. And um, I ended up keeping the same spring, which is the associated white rear spring. Now, when you're moving to the outside hole in the arm and you're going further out on the, the shocks, you're going to want to add two more millimeters of down travel and also two more millimeters of up travel. Um, the reason why, so I'm gonna explain two things. 
one, when you go the outside hole, the, the shocks need more um, free length stroke to get the same droop that you had with the middle hole. Um, we're already currently running the plus four millimeter eyelets, and um, which means that we don't really make a longer eyelet at the moment. Um, hopefully, not hopefully, I think at some point we may have to consider looking down that path or um, a shorter tower or whatever it may be. But um, I'm currently running 30.5 millimeter rear rear shock stroke with the plus four millimeter eyelet and um, two mil up travel limiters and the reason why i have the up travel limiters is because when you unscrew the eyelet so much the pistons will hit the top of the shock cap so it's basically maxed out as far as like total shock strength shock shock um free length stroke um because of how short the, the body is and how tall the tower. So there's some things kind of going on there. Um, but that doesn't mean that's that's a bad thing. Something in this package is some serious magic as far as comfortability, um, drivability, and how well it holds um, the rear end up and keeps traction. Um, the biggest thing that I noticed was how much easier it was to attack um, jump sections and throwing into the corner and it would stick and the stability of the, end of the straightaway um, was substantially better than the sway bar package middle on the arm um, so it kind of makes me think like what the heck was i doing before with the sway bar stuff um, which is a little unfortunate but that's part of the learning experience with the new vehicle so we're starting to see a lot more optimized setups with the v7 um, and really starting to hone in on what's important, what the car needs. So um, I thought that was like the biggest change I've made on the B7 so far. Um, I know a couple of people, a couple of teammates of ours have been running the third hole. Um, I, you know, this is basically my first time running it on first time, like officially testing at a hobby action because, you know, we kind of briefly started running it when we were at Hoosier for the first round of the no uh sorry the clash of champions actually and um we ended up running the third hole in the arm there which i thought was preferred but the difference was is we ran so much less rear droop like 27.5 um, or 28 rear droop uh just because we were just a little off on setup and spring there like um it's a little difficult to explain you know, sometimes when you have a lot of droop, this suspension can kind of work a lot, a lot and be unpredictable, especially for a, a sealed track. Well, with the um, the track that we were running there at Hoosier, we just took out a lot of droop to kind of fix a Band-Aid that we were kind of having at that time. So uh, we took out some droop to not have the car roll as much, which is normal at times, but... In the grand scheme of things, like with running this package now, 30.5 rear droop, like it's at the same, you know, we check in the droop with blocks. Um, the axle is in the same spot or roughly in the same spot to relatively where the cars have been for years. So at Hoosier, we ran a significant less amount of rear droop, um, which sometimes causes um, inconsistencies on jumps and landings. So um, kind of re-evaluating the third hole in the arm at Hobby Action and uh, kind of figuring out where the rear end stands. Um, the other thing to the third hole package uh, that I can totally say, if you are running middle hole in the rear arm um, here and you do go to the outside hole, you readjust the droop, you readjust the up travel limiting like how I mentioned, you can easily go down in shock oil. Um, actually, it's preferred, um, in my opinion. So I was typically running uh, 27 weight rear shock oil with two hole one nines, 1 1.0 rear piston. And now I have 25 weight um, with the third hole in the arm. So for those who are watching, third hole in the arm um, adds a lot more leverage to the arm. It makes it substantially more stiffer. Um, it makes the, pin the piston work in the shock body more so each small increment um the progression is so much different than the middle hole in the arm so 
the piston's working a lot faster, but since there's more leverage, you start to get, um, you know, just more of the, um, more or less, um, how do I describe it? More stability, high speed, and then how it recovers, I feel like the piston working faster in the shock body kind of recovers quicker um, because it is moving a lot quicker for each smaller increment when it's further out on the arm. Uh, similar to like how we've been running it in eight scale, to be honest, which is pretty funny, so to speak. So <clears throat> one of the best things, like I said, third on the arm was the best change that I did on the B7 so far. I kept the white rear spring. Now, if you are running the one up springs, um, I would say you want to be in the ballpark between um, gold would be probably the stiffest, and then whatever is one step softer than gold. I don't even know if one up makes a softer, softer spring than gold, but the AE spring in the rear, I think, is pretty superior right now with the third hole in the arm. Um, obviously, this is all subject to change at any given moment, um, but I mean, things are kind of escalating pretty fastly, pretty fast with setups and um, honing in on um, an even better baseline. Um, so I'm super stoked on how my stuff's feeling. And those were some of the best changes that I've done on the B7. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about with the front end, with our new um, KPI steering features that we have, um, I can honestly say that I probably did the most KPI testing I've done since I've driven the car over the last couple of days. Uh, the KPI two is a great baseline for people that um, if you're on the verge of you know you don't really know where what it's doing or understanding what's what's actually happening. Um, unless your track's super consistent and you can have a full steering block and cash block assembly and bolting one on you know, one run, switching it to the other run, and then really figuring out, you know, KPI 1, KPI 2, or KPI 3. Right now, I'm honed in on KPI 3 and KPI 2. Uh, KPI 2 is a very neutral steering um, feel. Uh, in my opinion, every time I've tested, um, not opinion and experience, every time I've tested with KPI 3, I've always done faster lap times. I can kind of drive it a little bit harder. And I feel that it's maybe a little bit more um, prone to kind of the, maybe the experienced expert guys um, with kind of the steering feel and the disciplinedness, you know, being really disciplined on the steering wheel. So for those who are on the verge, don't know what where to start, KPI 2, run it, call it a day, run that for a few weeks, a club racing, and then um, try KPI 3. You'll have to readjust your steering tie rod lengths. Um, and other than that, I think it's a good baseline. I mean, over the weekend, I, I club raced – on Wednesday with the KPI twos, I thought it was actually really good and easy to drive. And then um, did some testing the other day and um, went back to KPI threes. And then again, like, you know, you're stuck on a certain lap time for speed and then you change something and you're like, Oh, I gained another 10th or two on each fast lap, top five and top 10. You're like, crap, like that must, that must be pretty good. So uh, for those who are on the verge, don't understand the KPI stuff. I would say KPI 2, good baseline, the middle ground of everything, um, best of both worlds. And then, again, do some um, testing after you've gotten familiar with what the KPI 2s do, and then figure out from there, putting on KPI 3s, and then you'll be kind of um, understanding kind of what's going on. Um, in my opinion, with KPI 3 versus 2, when you are feeding into the wheel, and your mid to exit steering, the the car wants to pivot a little bit more and rotate. Um, so when you're on power and turning, you can definitely tell like weight gets shifted more, and it kind of like really puts the front tires in the ground, um, which people like. I think some of the best things that people have said about the the B7, which um, is good, is that the the amount of steering this car has 
um, is very, very, very good when it comes to um, smooth increments of steering, but also having the comfortability with using the wheel and the sweeper and understanding um, where the limits are of the car. So uh, that's it for the front end of the B7. Um, I'm not really, can't really say there's been any super magic other than, you know, on the setup sheets that we have posted, some of the best things that I've done or some of the, the changes from like kit baseline is um, if you're running on pretty, pretty high grip tracks, the HT steering, HT plus one steering plates, hands down um, the way to go. I can definitely tell like a Hoosier um, or even a hobby action with the kind of grip. When you start feeding into the wheel, you get kind of get less like two wheel moments. Um, the car stays a little bit more flat um, and doesn't want to. Um, it doesn't want to give you any. It gives you more warning if it's going to flip versus you know getting on two wheels and hiking or whatever it may be. Um, so um, that's a good uh, upgrade to get for the kit from from the kit and then my ultimate for one of my favorites for the front end changes is the minus two carbon plates um so the shorter front camber link uh those are um almost, basically i think a 10 out of 10 i think for sure the shorter front camber link is pretty superior with the middle here so we have the new factory team carbon plates um we're not new, but they've came out with the vehicle. So the kit comes with zeros. You have the option to go to zero, minus one, minus two, and then I believe minus three. And then along with minus three, there's a plus one. So there's an even longer camber link, I believe. Um, could be wrong, but maybe if Brent or one of my good buddies in here can confirm. So I've been liking the shorter front camber link. Um, with the axle height two in the front with two mil bulkhead shim. So I think the two mil bulkhead shim, two millimeter bulkhead shim, excuse me, with axle height two is a combo package. If you are running axle height one, I recommend you not to run two millimeter bulkhead shim. I would recommend running one mil bulkhead shim. So it's one and one or two and two is kind of the package um, that you're that I would say the window of the roll centers. So uh, Davey at Desert Classic ran one mil bulkhead shim, or sorry, wait, yeah, one mil bulkhead shim, one mil axle height, and then um, that was kind of his combo. I ran two and two. That's kind of what I've been liking. And, um, yeah, just something to really try. There's two ways to accomplish something um, with the roll center, and um, it's definitely – Crazy, the roll center on paper looks more similar, but it definitely performs different on the track. So Kevin King confirmed that there are, yeah, zero, plus one, minus one, minus two, and minus three. So there's five total um, Camberlink changes. Um, obviously, the kit comes with zeros, so you have four options. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the B7. Um, for those who are in the chat, if, the, if you have any questions regarding the B7 stuff, hopefully I covered and nailed. Uh, Kevin King, hopefully you heard me on the rear end stuff, um, third hole in the arm, because uh, you'll probably definitely like it at SDRC. Unless you're already running something similar, which is very possible. <sighs> yeah, when you talk, so Aiden Horn's also on the C hole package on the rear arm. That a boy. So we had a question regarding what pistons are you running with this setup? Um, if you're referring to the B7, I have uh, two hole one nines and one hole one oh in the rear with 25 weight, and then the fronts are one one seven one eight with uh, 30 weights. Yes, 30 weight, 
um, with 22 millimeter front droop plus two eyelet. Um, I have the one up front spring and then yellow and then a white rear. Um, if you don't have the one up front spring, it's pretty darn close to AE blue or gray. Um, it's in that ballpark. <clears throat> so let's see. What else we got here? So awesome to see we have quite a bit of people tuning in here on Easter. So thank you guys again. Hopefully some of the information, if you guys think any of this information is valuable, please put a comment below. Um, that way I go back and look at the feedback. Um, if there's anything, how I'm doing the live videos or anything you'd like to see different, um, also comment below. Uh, that way we can make some adjustments and um, make it happen. Ryan Print is asking, how much camber are you running with the minus two carbon plates uh, or camber links? Uh, same. I mean, I'm running, I believe, negative one and a half, negative two-ish uh, for the camber. Um, obviously, when you're adjusting the, the different camber links, longer or shorter, you'll definitely have to readjust the camber, obviously. Um, my suggestion is, is to run what you were running before just for the initial test and then tune from there so we have some new people tuning in what's up man So, um, great question. Hey, Spencer, was wondering, does adding more bulkhead shims allow the car to, to roll easier? Um, yes, when you are lowering the front bulkhead, it lowers the front roll center. Um, and basically, um, it allows more, more roll to the front tires. Um, which typically just makes it softer. So you'll kind of get naturally a little bit less camber gain, um, which on the like on the bench, you'll feel like it's stiffer, but it kind of drives softer on the track. So if you're looking for more steering, um, you know, lowering it more um, would be to a certain extent, like two millimeters is probably as much as you'd want to go before you'd start having clearance issues of jumps. But, like, for an example, like, the front ball stud mount here, if you were to raise it a millimeter, that would be very similar to, like, adding another shim to the bulkhead. So, it's basically the hinge pin to this, to this mount is the two points that are the most important. So, when you lower the ball stud mount, it gets further distance from the ball stud, which is lower in the roll center. And then when you raise... If you take out shims from the bulkhead and it gets closer to the ball stud, that's raising the roll center. And then again, if you were to lower the ball stud, which would get closer to the hinge pins, that's also raising the roll center. So keep that in mind. Like, to, you know, typically if, you know, your car feels darty and it's like really edgy off center, you know, sometimes lowering this makes it, um, you know, lowering this, you know, or raise, you know, raising the axle height is also raising the roll center. Um, that keeps the front end from collapsing as quick. So typically if your car, when you go down the straightaway and you let off the gas and you turn, and if it just wants to hook super bad, that typically means your front suspension is too soft. You need to stiffen it up a little bit, or, um, you know, there's a lot of different clues to figure out. Um, or if your rear end might be so stiff that it's not allowing it to lean on the rear, it's throwing so much weight to the front, it's pinned. So sometimes it's nice to maybe try and make a rear end change first. That way, you know, to see like where you're at with the um, the clues is what we like to call it. Um, it's one half dozen of the other, but let's see.
So, yeah, I think for the most part, um, people have been been pretty happy with the B7s. For those who are in here running 10 scale, um, you know, I would like to hear your thoughts on what you think of the B7, any issues you may be having or anything that you want to suggest having for upgrade parts or items that you want to see happen. Um, we're going to be talking about eights go here pretty shortly. And uh, yeah, I'm super stoked to kind of, you know, getting some, we, we, we've been getting some running in before the nationals at beach RC. Um, so Obviously, you know, some of the upgrades like I talked about with the rear end, the front end parts, and then um, obviously the F2 J concept body. This is something that um, was running since Desert Classic. So I'm super stoked to kind of finally have some um, of the JC Magic bodies on it. Uh, looking forward to testing and tuning with the P2 body. Hopefully, um, we'll have that soon. And to give you guys some options out there for the different bodies, uh, aerodynamics is pretty damn important for the vehicles that we race today. And um, it's always nice to have an option out there on the track. So are you going to the, the eight scale Nats this year? Yes, I will be there, uh, of course. Um, Jason Blake said, paint looks amazing. Thank you so much. David Fout, I would like to see a better aluminum bulkhead, better quality aluminum. David, um, that is a great request along with many others. Um, I definitely would like to see people happy with the front bulkhead. I personally... Um, I've experienced a bent bulkhead. I have one on my car currently. And um, so, yeah, I think for the most part, uh, there's a couple small tweaks. Obviously, there's always some some bugs with the new car. And um, I believe, David, that from what I've been told by a little birdie, the bulkheads and C-mounts have been adjusted and fixed. And then the parts that are coming in April... Um, will be updated and fixed. So um, keep an eye out for those parts. Obviously there's been a lot of items out of stock on the website. Um, I heard the B7 was a popular item the last couple months. So uh, things sold out quick. So we have Paul Wynn in here from J Concepts, my man. Uh, P2 is coming next week. Yes, can't wait. um people are requesting some hard over springs uh that is a good request i'll have to see where we're at with springs to be honest with you um i just run whatever's available uh whether it's schumacher springs or i've heard the x-ray springs are good so i haven't ran um carpet in a little bit be looking forward to seeing where we're at Is there any information about the T7 and when it will come out? Um, I don't know what we are doing with the T7. I don't even know where we're at with that project or if we're even started on something like that. Um, so uh, Jason Blake, are we, are they going to increase production? Um, I, I don't know a hundred percent. I do know that, it's hard to there's only so much that you can really order at one time um and i know <clears throat> you don't want to order too much because there may be some small tweaks that you want to make as far as like how production stuff works sometimes if you go order too much and then you're stuck with a lot of products that you know have defect defects on it luckily there wasn't anything major going on with the b7 stuff um so they sold out quick people got their parts and um, we should be we should have it in the next week or two. <clears throat> it's also raining here in Arizona, so don't worry about that. Uh, 
Um, John Smith, I will get in touch with Brent um, Monday or Tuesday on an updated setup sheet for Hobby Action. Um, see where we are on posting that. So thank you for the re request and reminder. Um, yes, I will be going to the INS 14 at Island Speedway. Uh, so I will definitely be there and I'm excited to uh, meet everyone there. And I appreciate you tuning into the live feed. Um, wasn't able to go last year, so I'm definitely going this year. People tuning in here from Switzerland, super stoked on, um, people seeing people tune in from all over. All right, now we got done with some um, 10 scale talk. Let's switch over to running some eight scale. Uh, and kind of switch over to some eight scale talk. Um, I was able to finalize my, you know, Richard helped out with prepping my eight scale buggy. Kind of talking about like the last time we did some testing out at Tony's. Um, obviously, my car's kind of put away. I have my my um, antenna tube kind of taped and prepared for travels. Um, some of the new things that I was testing at um, my local track with the um, car setup and things that be looking forward to tuning and testing at Cyber Nitro Blast. So for those who are attending Cyber Nitro Blast that are in this chat, I'm looking forward on seeing you and um, helping out any way that we can. So Richard and myself will be attending um, along with my dad and uh, Lee Sester. Um, Jonah will be there. So we have a good group of guys um, going. I believe Julian is also attending. So we have a good team looking forward to um, to running on the big track. Going to be um, – I didn't see if there was a joker lane this year, so I'm looking forward to seeing what um, they do for that. Um, but back to car setups for the 8 scale. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was the steering Akron plates. You know, over the years – over the last not year, I would say probably a year – maybe a little under a year we were i've been running like the zero acrim plates um over the weekend i kind of tested back and forth between the zeros and plus ones and um, the way the traction level was at tony's um was pretty high but also dusty so i ended up throwing on plus ones kind of readjust readjusting the toe in the front and um really prefer the plus one. So I had to readjust the toe along with the EPAs on your radio because anytime that you adjust your toe gaps at all to get your toe back, you it's a must. You're guaranteed your EPAs will, will be changed because that's basically the leverage points on what's pushing the wheel into the pillow balls. So um, once that's changed, you go back out there and see how it, the steering wheel feels on the wheel um i thought that was a big you know a good a good little tuning change there for comfortability um another thing too with the rear end you know the rear toe i was playing with like 1.5 degrees of toe um typically for the bumpy tracks like at silver state or um, dnc i was running um silver state last year i ran 3.5 um 3.5 toe in, um, which I thought was like a huge improvement. But then at DNC this year, I ended up like playing with like 2.5 degrees of toe just to kind of get the car to free up a little bit. So um, at Tony's track, I was running like 1.5 degrees of toe and like my car was actually like flipping at the end of the straightaway. And I really wouldn't say it was like all that magical um, for the grip level that I had. And then I ended up just putting on 3.5 and like instantly was a huge improvement with um, 
like stability, more traction. Um, I mean, I maybe lost a little bit of um, the freeness in the corner, but I think that there's some things that we can work on to kind of keep the, the rear end a little bit more flat. So um, there's still kind of some more testing to be done, but I wanted to really talk about um, was the, I'll, I'll have to go grab it, is the rear wing um, position, uh, which, I'll grab right here. So here's a wing that's uh, one of the Razor wings here. Actually, one of my old wings that I ran at the Worlds a couple of years ago. Um, the positions for the wings. So obviously, this is the front. We have the back here. So was the position of the wing. Um, I'm going to grab a pointer. So this is the way that I ran it over the weekend. So it's um, three lines down, one, two, three, and then three over, one, two, three is the whole position. Um, this is the way that I ran it over the weekend. And um, actually, let me retake that back. I was running it um, one, two, three, four, five, so I was running it basically four millimeters, maybe even more, six millimeters further back in the car. So the wing, so the wing was actually sitting like, let's say there. Um, the the position that I switched to is more like here. So the front of the wing was like in the middle. It was sitting like in the middle. or maybe just further back from the rear tires. So what does that mean when you move the wing forward or back? Um, great question. When I, so I don't know why I was running the wing so back other than maybe um, as, as far as I can remember, I can't um, pinpoint exactly, but I believe it all kind of started when we were in Chico and it was really high grip and my car was a little edgy which we tune this on 10 scale actually on carpet at least i have when you move the wing back um i've noticed that it takes a little bit of the initial steering away and doesn't rotate nearly as hard so with the um the more toe, like I was mentioning, how much like it feels so much more comfortable. You go to end the shirt away and the rear end stays planted. Um, but the compromises with that package, at least that I was noticing, was it just doesn't turn low speed and like you know rotates from the rear. Well, moving the wing further forward, four to six millimeters, um, gave me that next level feeling. Um, but also keeping the stability and grip that I was having with um, before. So there was a couple of things going on over the weekend. Um, running eight scale was um, my car was already kind of edgy with the um, the zero Ackerman plates. So I went smoother plates, you know, more Ackerman. So the outside tire turns a little bit less from the inside tire. And then with the rear toe, I kind of went back to old faithful, 3.5 degrees of toe, which which is with the, the shell C block. And then um, picked up a lot more comfortability, but then like the compromises for the infield. Well, with the wing being so far back, it was just like not really allowing the car to rotate, which I didn't even think about when I was driving. So I had like my tree was there, me and Mayfield were out there running and testing together. And um, I had already had the holes pre-drilled because they're, they're already enough apart. Like once you, you know, five, five rows down from the top. So one, two, that's the third one. That's what's preferred right now. And then um, five, four, five. So I was running like here. Had them put the holes on the back, which pushes it forward. And like instantly super consistent laps 
mega fast laps, um, you know, personal best laps that I was running. And I'm like, Mayfield and Truri were like laughing, like, well, that was only five or six tenths faster a lap. So it's cool. We all go out there and help each other. Um, and um, it was nice to kind of, you know, reevaluate the wing position. And um, it definitely makes a difference on um, those different services that you run. So uh, for those who are running eight scale, definitely worth something to just, just to try. So you have an understanding like, okay, like this is an improvement or moving the wing forward was a little bit too edgy for me or it, it rotated too much. So um, to put things in the short perspective, moving the wing back, is a little bit less steering, um, a little bit less steering, um, but maybe a little bit easier to drive off center, moving the wing forwards, more steering, and then more steering off center. But the thing about the let the more steering off center is now that I have the smoother um, plus one Akron plates, which comes in the kit, which is good, um, that gave me the smoothness even with the wing forward. So like there's some more optimizing packaging going on here. And I'm honing in on setup like I did with the B7. So I'm super stoked and um, pretty confident that I'm going to be liking this package at PMB. I'm looking forward to it at least. So um, on that note, I thought that was pretty big. Uh, that was basically the main things about the um, kind of findings for 8 scale. The obviously the just the shock package. Um, I'm you know for the PMBs and the AMSs, Shell has made um, thicker pistons, two point seven millimeter pistons, which are really good in high speed tracks, medium high grip. Um, so check out um, his pistons on his website. He he's been really good about. Um, getting notes out to people and posting comments. So uh, this is the rear shock package that I'm running in the rear is a five hole. Three holes are one seven, two holes are one five. And then in the front are, um, I will confirm what the front pistons are. Uh, The front pistons three holes one four and two hole one fives. So, um, 35. Well, if you're running in like 75 to 80 degree weather, I would recommend running 37 in the front and 35 in the rear. And then for PMB, I'm starting with 30, 35 front, 32 rear. Um, and then that way, if it's a little bit too thick because it's a little bit colder, then I have room to go to 32, 30 um, with the grip. So any questions regarding... Um, so this is a good question. Taylor's asking about the different rear wings. Um, in my opinion, they they drive substantially different. Um, the AE stock wing, they're so different in size and everything that um, it seems like the Razor wing has been been really proven and. Um, preferred because of the kind of grip that it makes, but also the stability that it has in high speed sections because of the center fins um, and how tall they actually are. Um, the razor wing has a lot more drag. So when you let off the gas, it, you can kind of feel it drag more. So um, that kind of helps with some stabilization when you're off power and turning into the, the straightaway. Um, the other differences is the weight, the associated wings a lot lighter. So sometimes with that wing can kind of feel a little bit quicker on its feet, so to speak. 
which is kind of why um, J Concepts is testing and developing, um, which is we had the Razer Lexan wing, um, which will probably be a pretty hot item once it's available because it's a lot lighter and that it's still pretty dang durable. So that will be nice. That will be a nice addition um, to the inventory. So the Razor Wing, I would say, has a little bit less steering feel, um, a little bit less steering, but with kind of adding the holes in the back um, or cutting the gurney down has been something that we've done, has been a, a huge help um, to kind of regaining the less drag feel. So you get the stabilization of the tall wicker um, fins in the center, um, but also, you know, if you want more steering, you can cut this down a little bit and still add the holes. So um, those are kind of the differences between the wings. But uh, probably the biggest one is is got is the weight is a big factor. So we have Davey Bata tuning in here. What's up, bud? So J Concepts talk. How are you liking the new Falcons and dirt bike tires? Which direction are you liking? Um, both tires are actually really awesome. So at um, TNR, we actually ended up racing and preferring the dirt bites. I ran them Pac-Man eating forward. Mayfield ran them Pac-Man eating backwards for the dirt bites. Um, and then the Falcons have been a great tire. I thought it was a really good tire at the um, Thunder Alley. And I ran them Pac-Man eating backwards. Or another example is the arrow facing towards the front of the car. Um, and then of course, obviously the reflexes were our old faithful tire that we ran at, um, dirt natural challenge and, uh, which I believe, um, you know, for Dakota, I believe he ran the dirt bites and Truggy, and then, um, Dakota also ran the Falcons and buggy in the main. So a lot of different, you know, varies of options. Um, a lot of people, you know, did well on a lot of different stuff. I ended up getting second in e-buggy. I ran reflexes. Those were good. So um, the dirt bites were really pop are, are a really popular item. I think that's going to be, um, you know, the new hotness at some point. But I think that kind of wraps some stuff up, guys. Um, I'm going to go eat a early lunch here. And, um, you know, looking forward to seeing everyone at the next coming, upcoming races. The next for me is this, the Psycho Nitro Blast leave on Thursday. And then I believe after the PMB, uh, we leave a week after for the 10 scale national. So some big races coming up. I'm looking forward to, um, to getting out there and racing. And um, hopefully you guys enjoy your Easter Sunday and be safe. We'll see you guys on the next one.